Now, uh, what I want to deal with is specifically just give you a quick overview of what we refer to as the data to wisdom chain. And look, there's lots of debate around these definitions. And every time I log on to one of the forums to hear a discussion, some young, ambitious individual will come on board and start to throw questions out. Hey, what's the difference between data and information, wisdom and insights? And let's get this entire standards body up in arms again as a huge debate uh, ensues once again. So there are some definitions. Uh, they do vary. Um, I'll give you my perception of them, um, and specifically in relation to the data points, insights, information that we need to basically um, lay our hands on. All right, so how can we draw a little of an example for you? So what we've got is, let's assume we get a whole bunch of data points. All right, and to keep the example simple, Let's say that I have a data point here, and this particular data point, let's make it uh, relevant to my location, um, is maybe five to five columns. Now, that's data. We don't know what it is. Uh, yeah, our intuition says, oh, it looks like an address, but really it's just you know, a couple of numbers and a name. And this is what's referred to as data. Now, if I go and I change this and I say this is five to five Collins Street, right, and I call this my business address, right, I now have what we refer to as information. In other words, I've given it just a little more context. Um, so now what I have is I have information that has encapsulated data, which is giving me a little bit of context. Now, you'll also understand a little bit that sometimes in order for us to get information, we add process, so there's slightly different definitions. So when you add context to something, process to it, that normally gives you the information. So you can't ever have information without an understanding of the business. So you can't have information without understanding the process and how that data is actually used. So that's an important point to remember. So really what we've got is we've got a data point here. Well, how do we use this? In what context? Well, this happens to be a business address. I could go and add some additional information. So there's maybe a point here, all right, which I can actually say, hold on, this is Ben's business address. So based upon my knowledge, all right, I've determined that I know that Ben actually uh, resides or works at this address. So now I've added something else to it. I've added some prime mental models there that I've used previously. So now what I have is I have Ben's address. All right, and often what happens is Ben might sit over here, okay, and what I'm doing is I'm connecting, you know, some of the dots like that, and each time I connect more and more dots, I can actually get more and more knowledge. It's a process called constructivism and connectivism. This is how you and I build our knowledge set. We connect as individuals, we have conversations, we talk about stuff, and during the process, you take that information and you map it onto your current knowledge model and you create new connections right, if you think that that information is relevant or valid. Okay. So really what we're doing here is, he has been over here, um, and this could be his height and some additional data about it, but what we're doing is we're connecting these two together and now I have Ben's business address. Now the next evolution of this is something which is called an insight. And we could actually go, oh, have a look here. All right, this is where Southern Cross Station is, train station. All right, and oh, I can add another connection point in here. All right, so what, we're, what we can actually see is that there's additional insight that might have come out of this. And we can say, oh, hold on. Um, ben works near Southern Cross Station. And that's just an insight. I haven't necessarily interpreted that in any other way. And that's often where the concept of wisdom comes in. Now I bolt onto this wisdom and I can make the statement, well, from a wisdom perspective, in order for me to get to visit Ben at his business address, um, the quickest way for me to get there is to get off at Southern Cross Station, not at Flinders Street Station. So now what I would have done is I would have applied some wisdom to all of this. All right, and come up with a new route that I would basically take in order to go and visit Ben at his work address. So this is just a very, very simple example around the differences between data, information, knowledge, insight, and wisdom. Okay, 
So remember what we're doing now in the define phase is we're predominantly looking for the insight. So the connection points that we can actually create. And the, the value of this exercise is that you, the more um, diverse the group of people you actually bring to this exercise, the, the greater the, um, the value is you're going to get out of it. Because what you've got is you've got different people with different lenses, different, con different mental models, different knowledge and wisdom sets that they bring to the table. And really when they're looking at all of this evidence, all of this data and the information, they can actually start to apply, oh hold on, there's a connection here, there's a coincidence over here, something's not working over here, something's not working over here. And really that's the point of uh, design is that we can actually try and identify what the those insights might look like um, because ultimately what we want to do uh, let's look at performance improvement um, of an organization it really just consists of two branches okay reduce errors and this is you know a lot of our efficiency programs governance processes, those types of things that we put in place to try and reduce the errors, Six Sigma, Lean, those things tend to be focused on the reduce errors. And we actually spend more of our time there as an organization than we do anywhere else, actually. But really, for performance improvement, it's a reduction in errors, but an increase in insights. So we want to be able to extract insights. We want to be able to look for contradictions. We want to be able to look for coincidences that might actually occur within um, the data that's available. And these are the things that we go, hey, hold on, something's not working there. Hey, why, did, why is that happening over here? Or hey, how did these executives, why did they make this decision and the complete turnaround of the previous decisions that they'd made? So all of these are what we refer to as insights and they can help us become a learn fast organization if we can try and extract them in a more efficient manner. So really for organizations that are looking to improve, you have to do both. You have to reduce errors and you also have to increase your number of insights. So developing the mindsets within your teams and your organization to be an insight driven, to look for and understand the different types of insights that they can extract. You know, that's your first step closer to being an organization that really just is full of ideas because they're constantly picking up new insights and therefore we can constantly take those insights, turn them into problem definitions and turn them into how might we questions. And that's what we want to do within the defined phase. Catch you next time.